Hi there, Jamie here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today, I wanna to show you how to use Google Earth Pro. Now, this is a beginner's tutorial on Google Earth, Google Earth Pro, so I'll be going over the basics on how to use it, but I also wanna show you some of the fantastic features that it has in it, like maybe you want to explore the moon and see where there's different landings, or maybe you wanna to go to a different planet like Mars and check it out or maybe go back in time to see a certain image of a city to see how it's grown over the past. And then you could go and measure a certain area from city to city, maybe a distance, or you wanna find out an area that of a property that you're looking at. So these are some of the things I wanna cover on Google Earth Pro today on Teachers Tech. Today's video is timestamped, so if you're looking for something specific, take a look at the description below and then you can click on the time and jump to that part of the video. Now, the other thing I wanna start with right now is just kind of explaining what Google Earth we're working on today and it's Google Earth Pro because there are different versions of Google Earth. You could be just using Google Earth on web and then you'll be able to just go right from your browser. Uh, you'll see when you click on it and it's a fantastic program Then you can do a lot of fun things and you don't need to install anything. And there's also uh, Google Earth on mobile. The one I'm looking at today is Google Earth Pro on desktop. This is going to be available for your PC, Mac, or Linux machine. This is a more powerful uh, Google Earth versus the web one where you can do more things on it. Some of the features like I was showing you before. Uh, and then you do have the ability to even save uh, the graphics in high resolution from this one. So if you haven't downloaded it already, go ahead and just download Google Google Earth from this. I'll put the link to this page down below in the description. So the first thing I want to explain is the navigation. How do you move around in Google Earth? There's many different ways that you can do this. Uh, the way I tend to do this is mostly through my mouse, but there's other ways you can use your keyboard or you can use this over here. With the mouse, you notice as you just move it around on uh, the Earth here, you can see that there is a hand. If I zoom up using my scroll, just by scrolling in and back, so you can scroll up. Now it is scrolling up where that hand is placed. So an example, if I move it, my hand down here to the corner, it's gonna zoom up at that point. So that's just a simple way to zoom in and up on a certain point. If I left click on my mouse, it grabs the earth. And at this point I can hold and move it to wherever I want. I can move it to east, west, north, south, depending on whatever I want, just simply to do this. Now also try the right click on your mouse and you can see that it does also, if I right click, I get the uh, two-sided uh, with it, the arrows up and down. And now as I move, you'll see the differences if I move to my right, if I move to my left, then if I zoom up, if I just move my mouse up or down, I'm zooming up or in. So those are a couple different ways using your mouse. Now, if you're on a trackpad or something, you'll just get used to uh, however you're right clicking and left clicking on it with a different amount of taps. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is on your keyboard, if you use your arrow keys, you can move around also. So if I just, uh, on my arrow keys, I sometimes I like to do this because it's easy to kind of stay in a, a smooth direction. You can go uh, the different directions very easy, uh, just like that. Now, if we look over to the side here, we have more movement tools here. We can do our zoom in and out right through here just by dragging this slider, you can see. Uh, we can move the earth either way by just clicking on these right here. So if we move in the different directions to the north, to the south, this will make, uh, make it move. And then we have the top one here and notice that it will uh, be changing where north is here. So notice if you look up top, as I click and hold, north is moving. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm just using my mouse right now to zoom out on the wheel. And if I go again, push up, push down, and then as the north comes across, if you want a quick way to orient to the north, just double click on this end in there and it will go back and then you can so no matter how uh if it gets all the way if i click and drag this i can move this into different uh locations on the orienta orientation but if i double click 
it will go back there. So that's just some basic about basic movements uh, when you're coming in to Google Earth to move it. If you're zooming in, and I'm going to show you to a different part here, let's just pick a place here as we zoom in. And I don't have labels on right now. We'll turn those on in a moment so cities aren't going to be coming up. As I come down, I want to point out if I hold shift down now, and as I zoom, so I'm holding shift on my keyboard and I'm using the wheel on my mouse, notice the difference that it makes on it. So I'm not just zooming in or out, it's changing the angle. If I let go of shift, then I'm going straight in, hold shift, and it's gonna change the angle on there. So that's on your keyboard holding down shift. If I uh, use my right, uh, if you use your right click and hold down, you can see kind of the differences that it will do on there too. So just some other things to point out uh, with just navigating Google Earth. So generally when people come to Google Earth Pro, they're gonna do a search uh, right away. Maybe they're trying to find their hometown or look up a spot where they're gonna go on vacation or check out where they went on vacation last year. Uh, to do this, very easy if we go up to the search here and this is gonna be uh, helping you as you type things in. So for example, if I wanna to go to Perth, Australia. So if I was gonna just type in Perth, you can see it gives me all the different Perths one here. I'm gonna pick this top one doesn't go anywhere yet, I'm gonna go hit search and you're gonna see that it goes, starts the globe starts to turn and we fly over to Australia just like that and it hovers over kind of the city of Perth. At this point, I can zoom up even more on this and I can use my shift to show you uh, what I did before when it just changes the angle of it. Now, still using search, I wanna point out, you can kind of do another search now if you are looking up, uh, let's say since I'm in Perth, I'm looking up grocery stores. So I don't even have to type everything. I can just, uh, you can see it kind of gives me a bun bunch of different uh, options, but I'm gonna pick this one, hit search, and then it gives me placements where these uh, grocery stores are. So then I can zoom up if I wanted to, zoom up uh, even more to kind of see uh, how it would be to get there. Now let's go somewhere else. Let's go and uh, we're gonna leave Australia. We're gonna go to Vancouver. BC. I'm just going to hit uh, search and you're going to see Google Earth start to uh, rotate and we'll fly all the way to Vancouver here as we zoom up. Now what I want to point out uh, as we zoom in, you can have some more options in in fact, you might already have these options turned on by default. I have mine turned off right now. As I zoom in, you can see everything kind of uh, is flat as I zoom. Uh, it kind of looks a little bit 3D, but not, not too much here. Uh, you can do a little bit more. Uh, if I look down at layers, and I'll go through different ones on the different layers, but uh, let's say if I wanted to see the buildings in 3D, I can click this on and then look at the buildings load up here. So if I start to zoom and I'm just gonna change my angles, you're gonna see the downtown I, with Vancouver look differently as all the buildings load up. So it does take some time to load up when you turn this on. Uh, so depending on how fast you're searching for things, uh, just something uh, to think about, but you can see how much fun, more fun this is already. The other thing you might wanna check is terrain. So if I uh, click on terrain, at this point now, if I start moving around, the terrain uh, on the land changes. So if there's any uh, mountains, if I zoom out and I know uh, there's mountains around here, you can start to see the terrain as I zoom up. It gives a different feel uh, as we're going around and looking at the houses of it. So as I said, though, things will take some time to load up sometimes as uh, if you stay in a spot, though, that will load up even more. So those are a couple things to turn on the 3D buildings and terrain if you're looking around. Uh, the other thing I want to point out and is a fun thing, and I'll just stay in Vancouver to do this, is uh, we can turn photos on. So if I turn photos, uh, what that does, if we have any photos in here in Vancouver, uh, there they come up and you can see little tiny photos start to show up here. If I zoom up, this shows where a photo was taken and I'll just click on one right here and then it loads up and then just shows, uh, you know, it gives that information of that photo. So wherever, if you have that turned on on photos, you just need to look for that wherever you see one. You can see there's two photos at this one. 
and someone took a picture of the playground there. So just some layers to think about turning on. Uh, I'll go through and turning on more and more of these as I go through. Uh, some of them are pretty obvious though, if you wanted borders and everything. So if I'm gonna zoom out now, just like this, and if I zoom out, you're gonna see that if I go and turn my borders and labels on now, uh, we see the Canada-US line right through here. Uh, we still see all the different pictures. I can click on it from here to open it up. I'm gonna just turn off my pictures. If we want roads on, if I select roads, if I zoom up on it now with the roads on, we should start to see all the roads here. Uh, like I said, sometimes it takes a while, a few seconds for things to load up, but take a look at all the different layers that you can be using uh, and turn what turn them on or off to get more information. So the layers are very, very quick uh, to use. Now, what I want to show you, while, while we're still in Vancouver, I'm going to zoom in again and we'll go over uh, to here and I'm going to turn off my roads again but I'm gonna zoom in. And what I wanna point out is that there's street view too. If I hover over, uh, I'm gonna zoom out and just to show you. So if I uh, notice that this is here now and that wasn't, if I just keep zooming out, uh, if I don't have Vancouver on, if I'm way out, it's not gonna be there. But since I have already selected Vancouver, we have this here. And if I go down to Vancouver again, and I'm gonna just go to this part and notice if I grab this, and drag it over. So where it's gonna work is where you're gonna see those blue lines. I should be able to drop this wherever I want, wherever I see those blue lines and I should get street view. So if I uh, just drag over, let's say drag here and drop, it brings me to street view. So at this point, I can start navigating through Vancouver or whatever city I want and you can start navigating and you can see I can turn inside here by clicking and dragging. I can use my arrows again. Uh, you can also see by looking at the direction at dragging up here. And if I ever want to be just making sure I look back north, double click that again, and then I can continue down the road. So that's using street view inside of here. So that's another fun option to take a look at uh, and very easy to use. Uh, so if you take a look over here, if I want to switch between street view and ground level, if I click this again, now I'm going to be back at ground level here to kind of give a, a different look here. And we have exit, uh, we have our exit ground view here too, so I can come right out of it uh, and zoom back out to where I was before. Now with any of these places with your searching, I want to point out, uh, you can add this to places down here. So if I click copy the current uh, search result to my places. So if you want to kind of a quick, uh, just a click, if I click on this, Vancouver is here now. So I could have a bunch of different places uh, that I could be uh, putting different information in. Uh, the other thing I want to point out too, you can get your history of all your different searches right through here. So you can see uh, how I was looking at Perth and Vancouver uh, in it. If I want to clear my history, I can go ahead and clear it and I can close this back up again. Uh, but now if I go ahead, open up Vancouver, and it's gonna go back to Vancouver right here. So some things how you can be setting up, saving that information too. So another thing you can do is, so let's say if I was gonna to go to Los Angeles and we'll just fly over uh, there, we can get directions uh, from a place to place. So it could be from a shorter distance or longer distance. If I go get directions, and if I was gonna be uh, Los Angeles uh, on this one, and if I wanted to go all the way to Phoenix, oops, there we go. It took a second. And then I have the route that would be just coming up through here. So you can see it's zoomed out to see the whole thing. And then uh, it kind of goes and gives me some times on it. It gives the directions through here. Uh, if you're going to walk it, you can get uh, an idea uh, with it too. You can see it takes a little bit of time to load up on it, but gives you some different options of if you're going in different ways uh, to it, 
it just changes through here. But if you're driving, just go back. And you can do this in, in, in a city. You could zoom up on it and do that same thing. So that's just some basic search here of uh, making sure you know how to kind of use the search to find what you're looking for add them to your places, and then take a look at all the different layers that you can use uh, here. Notice how I'm dragging up here. Uh, you can turn it on and off. I didn't go through all these here, but you kind of select them as you go through to see uh, kind of what you're looking for to help you find that information. So let's go somewhere else now. And where I want you to be looking at is I'm going to type in a place but take a look at the bottom here. I uh, notice as I hover my mouse around, these numbers are changing because I'm getting, uh, you can see where I'm getting the degrees, minutes and seconds of that location where my mouse is. Uh, we have elevation where the mouse is, and then it's the eye altitude that's not moving because that's just how far if I zoom in then that number changes. So let's go over to Austin, Texas here. So we'll just do a search and we'll fly over and uh, go through and you can see that that is moving right through here. So if you needed the exact coordinates, you'd be able to get the degrees, minutes and seconds right from here. Now, if I zoom up, if I want to get even more specific, if there was a location in Austin, um, and we'll just go to this right here. And if I hover right over, then it gets more exact. But what I can do, uh, see that there is a pin right here uh, at a placement mark. If I click it, then this pops up. I can change this pin, but if I go ahead and move it to right here, uh, I have my latitude longitude come up. Now it makes it easy. I could copy paste these out of here rather than just kind of writing them down here. When I place that pin, it gives that exact one. So I wanted to point out that if you need to get that latitude longitude specifically, uh, you can go through and place the pin and get that. Now, the other thing I would I want to show you is that uh, we can do uh, measurement of distance from place to place. So uh, we'll stay in uh, Austin here. And then if we are going from uh, maybe where I just put and I want to see the distance to, uh, we'll just go over up here. So right here, there's a ruler. So if I go show ruler, uh, now I'm, I'll just do a line here. If I go and click on, I just have to click to start my point on the line. And do I, what do I want to measure this in? Do I want this in kilometers, meters, centimeters, uh, miles? If I switch it over to miles, and then if I click once, you can see I kind of anchored it on that. Now I'm just dragging my, uh, my mouse over to where I was going to measure. And you can kind of see uh, the distance changing here and we'll just click it right to he, uh, right to here. So now I double clicked and it ended it. The distance was 1.24 miles. If I wanted it something else, you can see 1.99 kilometers and I can just switch it up. I could save this if I wanted to, but if I want it gone, I could go ahead and hit clear. Now, the other thing I want to point out when you're going through and measuring uh, different uh, distances. Now I did that, that was a pretty straight distance, but what happens if it curves and you know that it's going to, depending on how the road is, you need to measure that. You might want to uh, then use a different thing and that's going to be path. Because what path can do, if I was going to go and we'll say, uh, we're going to click it from here, I'll start it from this point down here. So now if I click it, what I can do is as I click, I can add more points and I can do it a custom way. So I'm getting a little bit, maybe I can zoom up a little bit of that, uh, bad driving there. But as I go through, if you put them closer together, then it's easier to turn. And then as I go through the distance, so rather than doing that straight line, if you use the path, you can uh, start to go and you can see how the distance is changing. If I go back over to miles, I'm a little bit over a mile here. Now I could do this over larger uh, areas too, but I just wanted to point that out. Now, the next thing I wanted to point out in this one, and I showed it in my introduction, uh, was if there's a certain area that you wanted to measure. So I'm gonna go and clear this, and I'll just stay here as an example, and we'll just zoom in here. 
to this part. So maybe if I, I'm gonna to go to uh, polygon here, and then you can look at perimeter here, and depending on how you want this in, do you want this in acres? Uh, we, you can set it the way you want. But now if I was gonna go through, and I'll just pick an area here, uh, and I'm gonna be kind of random on this one. If I put a point over here, I could stretch this out and then find this. So if you knew where you were looking at a property and you, was, you were wondering how large it was, you could draw your points around it. I could add more points to this too and change it. You can see how uh, you can change it up by adding more of those uh, dots and then you're gonna, it, then things are gonna change even more. And then you're getting the area uh, here. So this is an acres, this is 31 acres here. But you, if you wanted to change it into square feet, square yards, you can see how everything is there. So using that ruler uh, is a handy, play, handy thing to kind of get those distances between different locations, or you can find the area using the polygon. So some things to take advantage of when using Google Earth Pro. So remember at the very beginning in the intro, I showed that uh, you could take a look back in time at images and I was showing London in that and I'm hovering over London right now and I thought I would show it again. So to do this, you just go up to this icon right here and it show historical imagery. If I select that, and right now, if you look at uh, the current, it's 2022, it's April 2022 here, and this is th that image. Now, I could drag it different points. What I'm going to do, though, is just drag it all the way to 1945, and you can see the changes here. Now, I do have 3D buildings turned on. I could turn that off uh, if I wanted to, if I didn't want that worry with the load up. But if I'll go back, slide it, and you can see kind of the differences here just to compare uh, with it, uh, you know, the kind of the different buildings and what was built or not too. So that's using the this icon right here, the historical image. Try going around and looking at different places, seeing what pictures. I'd like to know what the oldest picture that you could find. Uh, this one, London, is 1945. Is there a different city that you found that's even older? Just write it down below in the comments and then we can look, all look for that too. So the other fun feature that I showed you at the beginning was exploring the moon or Mars. And it's really easy to do this in Google Earth Pro. If I go up to this icon right here and click on it, you can see sky, Mars, moon. I didn't mention the sky. So if I go to the sky, uh, what you're going to see are constellations. You're going to see galaxies and you can uh, maneuver in it the same way you do with Google Earth. You can keep zooming in, zooming out, moving on it, uh, clicking on different things you want to read about. Uh, you notice if I go over to the layers, you can take a look at the different information, uh, turning uh, them off or on, depending on what you want to see. So try exploring the sky. I want to go over to the moon here. So if I go to the moon, again, take a look. We have all the different layers that we can be turning on or off here. Uh, we have, you can see the Apollo missions and everything. I'm just going to check my ruler. Sometimes I have my ruler on or off. Um, and if I zoom up, I can zoom up on certain areas and then you get to see that uh, where is there, there's some different images taken from here and you can do some exploring by clicking on things, zooming up on it and just getting to know the moon a little better. The other thing is there is Mars here and again, you can be going to Mars, the red planet, as you're looking at it, take a look at the different options they have in the layers, uh, looking for those key areas well, where there's gonna be some information uh, on it. If I get this, I'm just turning my ruler on or off and then I get my hand one back. And then again, start reading about Mars, seeing what information they have collect on, collected on it that you can explore and share with other people. So to end this tutorial here today, I just want to talk about the last few icons up top here that are very quick to use, but there's some great functionality to Google Earth Pro. So the first one I want to show is just the uh, sunlight here. So if I click it, I can drag back and if I want to see how sunlight uh, would be going over, let's say the US Canada here, as I bring it back and forth, you can kind of get that idea to see how it travels. I'm just gonna turn this one off. Now, another great uh, thing about this, let's say you were gonna give a little tour to somebody, uh, you can go to this, you can record a tour. So if I was clicking this, 
Notice at the bottom here, I get a record. The microphone is there. If I was going to, I'm going to hit record. I'm just going to start moving and I'm going to zoom up on a place. And now I'm just going to end it like that. So it's only eight seconds long, but now it's playing again and it recorded exactly what I did there. And I can go ahead and save this also. So you can go through, save this. Uh, so if you wanted to have that little recorded there. Now, uh, continuing on, I'm going to close this out here. I wanted to point out the options up here uh, where this is where you can email a screenshot and everything. But what I like to do is if we go, I'm going to zoom up here and maybe we wanted an image here. Uh, Google Earth Pro allows you to take a high resolution image. So if I go up to uh, right up top here and as you hover over, you'll see the different ones. So this is save image. If I select this, uh, I have map options, title. I can go through the different elements. You can see kind of the styling uh, here. Uh, I can pick a resolution what I want. So do I want the maximum? It gives you the sizes here. So if I just wanted high def, I can uh, edit my map description. So if this was going to be uh, New York here, I could go ahead, uh, give it a title here, and uh, I could give it a description and everything too. And you can see I can edit the le legend. When you find everything, uh, you, if you get it to exactly where you want, just go hit save image and you'll see that you're going to be saving this as a JPEG on your computer and you can you send it to somebody else if you want. But I like that you can save it as a high uh, resolution here and do take a look at the different map options that you can use too. So if you want those images, these last two icons here will just uh, take wherever you're looking and go to view in Google Maps on the internet, or this will go to Google Earth on the uh, just on the browser one that I mentioned at the beginning. So uh, those are just connecting directly to that. So I hope you like this overview today of how to use Google uh, Google Earth Pro. I love this tool, kind of just playing with it and searching. I'd really like to know some of the things that you find that are really interesting uh, when you're going around looking, just write them down in the comments and then maybe I can make another video about all oh, the interesting things that people have found. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.